In the previous video, we talked about center of mass in a more discrete way. In this case, we're going to do it in a more continuous way. So let's say now that we are considering a thin plate. <clears throat> so consider a thin plate, and this plate is what we're going to call the lamina. Just a fancy way for a thin plate. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, um, we are going to say, like, let's say we have this function. Okay, so... You have some function f of x between two different points, a and b, okay? And um, in, this, in this case, this particular function maybe has some sort of density. So um, we're going to say that rho is going to be the unit dens uniform density, <clears throat> okay? And remember, this is in mass per unit area <clears throat> and then we are going to try to figure out where exactly is going to be the center of mass because you can see that there's going to be some points that are they're a little bit more uh, more dense than others so uh, we're going to try to figure out where exactly is the center of mass so um, similar to what we, you were doing with integration we are going to divide this into uh, many different rectangles and let's just say that this particular rectangle corresponds with the center of mass so let's say the center of mass works right here so this guy right here is the center x bar okay <clears throat> so right here x bar is the center we're going to say that this whole thin little slice is going to be delta x <clears throat> so here if i were to look at the center this would be x bar comma y bar <clears throat> okay, so um, now what we're going to do, we need to figure out what exactly would be the formula of x bar comma y bar given some sort of function. So if I gave you some function, what would be the center of mass of this thing? Okay, well, um, a, a couple things to know is that we need to figure out what this area of this particular rectangle is. Okay, so we know that the area is just going to be the length times the width. And the length in this case is going to just be... Uh, this f of x bar i times delta x because imagine that this whole thing is going to be the um, the width of this thing of this rectangle and if I go all the way up you're basically evaluating this at f of x bar okay that's basically what what, what I'm doing okay so that's our our mass I'm sorry our area okay now our mass it's just going to be our density times our area. So if the density is rho in this case, then our area is going to be basically what we just figured out, which is going to be f of x bar i times delta x. <clears throat> All right, so now if we want to, now that we know what this is, well, what we want to figure out now is the moment, okay? So now we're going to have the moment about the y-axis, okay? And we know that the moment about the y-axis is just gonna be the mass times the x-value, okay? So we know what the mass is. Our mass is gonna be rho f of x bar i times delta x times, that's all, all of this is just our mass, times our xi. <clears throat> Okay, so then this is going to give me uh, rho xi, okay, times f of xi oh, uh, bar, and then times delta x. Okay, I'm forgetting a bar here, I'm forgetting a bar, a bar here, because this is going to be times xi, xi in this case is x bar, okay. Um, okay, so now this is going to be for just one particular xi unit. So what we want to do is we want to be able to sum them up, take the limit, do all that stuff. And when we sum all these guys up, what we're going to get is rho. Then this is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of x, f of x, 
dx, okay? So we basically just found the moment about the y-axis. So we can say the moment about the y-axis is going to be equal to uh, rho, the integral from a to b of x, f of x, dx, okay? <clears throat> All right, and now that we just have the moment about the y-axis, we want to figure out what the moment about the x-axis is, okay? So the moment about x-axis, same thing, it's just going to be the mass times, in this case, it's going to be y-bar, okay? Now, what is y-bar in this case? Well, if you go back up, if this thing, so let me go ahead and just take the little slit again so let me just write it right here so here is our little rectangle okay we know that this guy is x bar okay so this guy must be y bar okay the one that's associated with the y value now what is that equal to well if you think about it this guy is right in the middle between this point and this point so this is just the midpoint between the function values so this y bar is just equal to one half of f of x bar, okay? So I'm gonna have mass, which in this case was just equal to rho f x i bar delta x <clears throat> times my y bar, which in this case is gonna be one half f of x i bar, okay? This is gonna be equal to rho times one half f of x i bar squared okay delta x okay and then if i were to sum all these little rectangles up take the limit what i'm going to end up getting is that the mass or the moment about the x-axis is just equal to rho integral from a to b of one half f of x squared dx. So here are my two formulas for my moments, that one and this one. Those are my formulas. Now those are just the moments for the continuous case. Now what we really want to figure out is what is the center of mass? Where exactly is this x bar, y bar? Okay. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do, um, let me choose a different color. Okay. So now what we want to figure out is what x bar is. So x bar is just going to be the moment about the y axis divided by the total mass, which is basically what we learned in the previous um, in the previous video. So this is equal to well, we just figured out what m sub y was. That was just equal to rho integral from a to b of x f of x dx divided by the total mass. Okay, which is going to be rho integral from a to b of f of x dx. How do we know that that was the mass? Well, let's go ahead and go back to like the mass formula. Well, the mass was equal to the density times its area. We, we had this, if I were to sum all these guys up, we're gonna have rho integral from a to b f of x dx. So that's how I knew that, okay? So let's go back. What's gonna happen is that the rows are gonna cancel out. So we are left with the integral from a to b of x f of x dx divided by integral from a to b of f of x dx. <clears throat> now notice that this bottom part is just the area under the curve, okay? This is just the integral from a to b of f of x. That is just this entire area that we have here. So all we're just going to do to make it a little bit nicer, we're going to say that x bar is equal to 1 over a integral from a to b x f of x dx where a is just basically the integral from a to b of f of x dx or the area under the curve okay so that is the center of mass for the x direction so x bar now we need to figure out what y bar is going to be so y bar is equal to the moment about the x direction divided by m same thing rho integral <clears throat> from a to b okay and then this is going to be equal to and um one half f of x whole quantity squared dx divided by m which is rho integral from a to b 
f of x dx. Again, the rows are going to cancel out, okay? And this is going to be equal to, this whole thing is just a, okay, just how we had it before. So y bar is going to be equal to 1 over a, the integral from a to b of 1 half f of x squared dx, okay? So these are my two formulas. So if you really wanted to figure them out, these are my formulas. So if you kind of were like, I have no idea what you just talked about, it's okay. All you have to figure out or all you need to know is this. So center of mass. Okay, so let's say you had a function. Okay, so here's a function, f of x. And this was between a and b. Okay, and you wanted to figure out the center of mass of this particular problem. It's very easy. x bar is going to be equal to um, 1 over a integral from a to b of x, f of x, dx. Okay, and y bar is equal to 1 over a integral from a to b of 1 half f of x squared dx. And here in this case, a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. <clears throat> All right, so this part is basically what my uh, formulas look like. So this is what, these are the formulas that you're going to be using in order to figure out the center of mass given some particular function. Now, alternatively, uh, you could be using that. Um, so this is if you only had one function. So this is, I guess, case number one. You can also have case number two, where in this case, you just don't have one function, but instead you have two functions, so maybe some function f of x, maybe some other function g of x, okay? And between these two curves, you have this thin plate, okay? And you want to figure out the center of mass between that thin plate. So in that case, you have to incorporate f of x and g of x. Well, it's basically the same thing, okay? So in this case, you would just have x bar is equal to still 1 over a, integral from a to b, okay, of x, f of x, minus g of x, dx, and then y bar is equal to 1 over a, integral from a over b, of x, oops, not x, uh, 1 half, uh, f of x squared minus g of x squared dx and here the area is equal to uh, integral from a to b f of x minus g of x dx <clears throat> okay so this one is the second case so you can have the first case where you actually have just one function so here is when you only have one function f of x that you would just have to worry about okay you just use these formulas. If you have a bounded between two functions, so two functions that are bounded, and right here, bounded, then in this case, it'll be these formulas. And you would remember these from calculus, from Calc 1, where you just have to find the differences between the upper minus the lower. So this is basically the same formula. You can just see that I just plugged in a g of x in there, and I just subtracted them from each other. Okay, so depending on what problem I give you, you will either use case one or you will either use case two for center of mass.